In this video, we're going to discuss the Michaelis-Menten mechanism for enzyme kinetics. So an enzyme is just a catalyst, which is a protein and functions for a specific biological reaction. And the substrate is whatever reactant molecule is reacting with the enzyme and is usually a very, very specific kind of molecule, often even a specific enantiomer of a specific molecule. So the enzyme and substrate are both just floating around in solution. The enzyme then binds to the substrate, kind of changes its conformation to lock around the substrate, uh, catalyzes whatever reaction the substrate undergoes into the given product, then releases the product, and the cycle continues uh, as fast as that reaction occurs. So this type of mechanism was proposed by Michaelis and Menten in 1911. And that involves uh, two elementary reactions. That's the enzyme and substrate reacting to form the enzyme substrate complex, which I have crudely drawn up here on the top right. And that goes forward with a rate of K1, backward with a rate of rate constant of K minus one. And then this enzyme substrate complex can react to form enzyme plus product. And that goes forward with rate constant K2, backward with rate constant k minus 2. Okay, so we want to figure out some things like um, what is the rate of this reaction and what are some other factors which control how fast it goes. Okay, so let's start out by writing the rate law for the substrate. So minus ds dt equals k1 times e times s. That's it getting consumed by k1 it gets produced by k minus 1, so minus k minus 1 es. Notice the signs are switched because I put a minus sign out in front there. Then we can look at our concentration of our intermediate, our enzyme substrate complex. So we have minus d es dt equals 0, so that is invoking the steady state approximation. So that equals zero. That change in concentration is zero due to the steady state approximation, as we discussed before. So that's equal to K2 plus K minus one times the enzyme substrate concentration. So it gets consumed both going forward, K2, going backward, K minus one. Those are those two rates there. It gets produced from K1 times concentration of E times concentration of S. It gets, cons it gets produced from K minus two. So we have a minus K minus two concentration of E and concentration of P. Okay, those are all the mechanisms that consume and produce the enzyme substrate complex. And finally, we have dpdt, which we're not going to put a minus sign on there, I'll just put a plus sign to emphasize it, equals, it gets produced uh, via k2, whose rate law is times es, it gets consumed by k minus 2, so minus k minus 2, that rate is determined by concentration of e times concentration of p. Okay, um, another thing that we can notice is our total enzyme concentration is fixed, and that is equal to our concentration of our enzyme uh, E naught is equal to our enzyme concentration plus our enzyme substrate concentration. So our enzyme either exists as enzyme substrate or it exists as free enzyme during one of these other four steps here. Okay. So we can use this equation there to simplify our concentration of our enzyme substrate complex. So we have minus DES DT equals zero from steady state approximation. And then if you factor out everything, so substitute in this substitution there and do all the factorization, you'll get ES times K1 times S plus K minus 1 plus K2 plus K minus 2 P. Okay, and then continuing on the line, 
k minus 1 s e naught minus k minus 2 p e naught. Okay, so this equals 0. So now we can solve this. Um, Add, this, add these terms to the other side and divide by this top term in parentheses to get the enzyme substrate concentration. So we have concentration of ES equals K1S plus K minus 2P divided by K1S plus K minus 2P plus K minus 1 plus K2, all of that times E naught. Okay, so our total reaction rate then, our V of T, so our reaction rate is equal to the negative, it's equal to minus 1 over stoichiometric coefficient of ds dt, because S is our reactant there, so we have minus its, its coefficient is just 1, so we have minus ds dt equals, so we're substituting in there, because we have, we have E, we have S, now we have concentration of ES. So substituting in everything there, you get K1, K2, S minus K minus 1, K minus 2, P, all over K1, S, plus K minus 2, P, plus K1, K minus 1, plus K2, all times E naught. Okay, so that is our reaction rate. So we're going to define some initial conditions to help simplify this out, get our initial rate. So we're going to say at time equals zero, we have the concentration of substrate is approximately equal to S naught. This will be some time which is slightly after T equals zero, which has allowed our enzyme substrate complex to build up to its concentration, which is going to stay constant due to steady state throughout the rest of the reaction. So this is approximately time equals zero, but really what we're saying is it's far enough after time equals zero for our enzyme substrate to have built up to its constant concentration. So we're going to say S is approximately equal to S naught, and we're going to say that our product concentration is approximately equal to zero. So right near the beginning of the reaction, once it has achieved steady state, if you, if you include all of those assumptions, then that goes to zero, that goes to zero. And what we're going to have for our reaction rate is we're going to have V equals, we're going to have K1, K2, S naught, E naught over K1, S naught plus K minus 1 plus K2. And then we're going to simplify this uh, slightly to a final result. That is going to be V equals K2 S. Um, notice that we have the K1s that are going to cancel there. So I'm going to go ahead and cross out those K1s. So this is going to cancel too. So S naught E naught over a quantity called Km plus S naught. Okay, this is our final expression for our reaction rate. I'm going to note that this Km is defined as K1 plus K2 over K1. And this is called the Michaelis constant. And this K2 
also has a special name. This K2 is called the turnover number, which is kind of a maximum effective rate type for this reaction for a given concentration of enzyme. So we want to look at a few special cases here with regard to this enzyme concentration or with regard to substrate concentration. So at low substrate concentration, low S naught, what we're going to have is Km is much, much greater than S naught. And in that case, what you have, Km is much, much greater than S naught. So you have K2S0, E0 over Km. So you're going to have V equals K2 over Km S0 times E0. So at low substrate concentration, what you have is a reaction which is first order in substrate. It's also first order in enzyme concentration. And it has a rate constant, which is just K2 over Km. Alternatively, you can have at high substrate concentration, you have Km is much less than S0. And so Km is much, much less than S0. So the denominator just becomes S0. So you have K2, S, E over S. The S's will cancel. So you'll have your velocity of reaction equals K2 times E0, which is equal to V max. So at very, very high substrate concentrations, what you have is your reaction is zero order in S. So this I should say up here is first order in S. So your, your reaction is zero order in S at high substrate concentration. Because what happens is all of the enzyme gets bound up in enzyme substrate complex, and thus you get your maximum, uh, your maximum rate is just how fast the enzyme can cycle through and get rid of substrate because the enzyme spends all of its time bound up in, in being an enzyme substrate complex. As soon as the enzyme gets free, there's more substrate for it to react with, so it's reacting at maximum rate here, which is why your Vmax uh, divided by enzyme concentration, so that's your maximum rate per unit of enzyme is equal to K2, which is why we call this K2 the turnover number there, which is in units of 1 over seconds or hertz, so cycles per second. And this will be a number that you'll generally see somewhere between like 1 to 10 to the 7th. So something where it's uh, 10 to the 7th per second would be uh, you know, 10 million 10 million units per second are being produced. And this enzyme effectively is what's called diffusion limited because it's reacting as fast as substrate can diffuse to it. And that would be a criterion for a very, very quick enzyme. So you see the rate limiting behavior at both of these ends according to michaelis menten kinetics, which we got from these two elementary reactions and invoking the steady state approximation for this enzyme substrate complex giving us first order kinetics in the substrate at low concentration and zero order kinetics in the substrate at high concentration.